Hello everyone. In the first part of this tutorial, I basically showed you how you can create a database backend for C Sharp ASP.NET Web API project. Uh, so we were using uh, MariaDB as our database provider. So uh, over here in DBver, you can basically see what we did the last time. We have this a table called items. We also created some uh, basic stored procedures uh, to manipulate those items. So you can uh, get one specific item, for example, or all of them. You can save an item, which is basically like an absurd uh, operation. And then you can um, also delete uh, like one specific item, for example. So basically this is what we did the last time. Okay, so in this part of the tutorial, hopefully the last part, uh, we'll be dealing with the actual web API project. So I'm gonna bring my terminal over here. I'm gonna say .NET new. Uh, web API and we're going to specify a name let's just call it my web API All right so this should create a template for us so we're going to cd into that directory so my web API I'm going to bring visual studio code over here to see what we actually have there right so we have some files because um, it's like a basic template this weather forecast template uh, this example doesn't actually connect to a database but it kind of randomly uh, picks some summaries here to display some some data so we can just take a look at how it works so you're gonna say dot net watch and you can see the API here um, is actually using Swagger to, you know, kind of help us interact with the API. So we have like one endpoint here, one route basically, and we can test it. Uh, so as you can see, it brings us some data here, right? So <clears throat> this is how it works. I'm not really gonna delete this part. It doesn't really hurt us to have it there but we're gonna actually try to mm, do our part now so let's just go and uh, look for some dependencies that we need for our project especially the one to connect to to the database uh, so we're gonna look for uh, mysql connector this nugget package okay so let's just uh, grab it here and uh, go to our project file we already have the, the packages that responsible for the um, swagger UI here and we're gonna paste this one as well and one more thing to make our lives easier let's actually search for dapper uh, to help us communicate and you know like exchange data with the date uh, with the database so I'm gonna copy this over here and save don't need to restart it for now. We just can continue working. Now let's go to uh, the app settings JSON. Uh, we're gonna include here our connection string so we can actually connect to our database. Maybe not the best way to do it in production because uh, there you could probably use something like uh, an environment variable or some other way to store your, you know, like confidential data. Um, 
depending on your on the platform that you're using your your hosting uh, system so but you know for the sake of this tutorial we're just going to use the app settings file so i'm going to say connection strings um let's say storage storage Let's specify the server, which is in this case localhost. By default, MariaDB uses uh, port number 3306. So if you haven't changed it, you don't really need to specify it. If you did, you would specify the port here, for example, something like this. Yeah, but we're using the default one. We don't really need to change that. So the database is called db1 our user id is web api and our password actually it's uh, i think spelled like this pwd super strong password Okay, so that's for the connection part. And let's uh, go to the program CS file. And actually, uh, just you know, for the sake of clarity, if you were um, keeping or storing your uh, your connection string like uh, as an environment variable, you could do something like like this and say string. A connection string and we would say environment and get environment variable and here we would specify the name of your variable I'm not going to go into the details here because I don't want to make this tutorial uh, like platform specific but let's say it just called storage so it type storage here and then you could add it to like um, an in memory collection so let's say builder configuration add in memory collection and you could of course add more variables here But it would be string and string, nullable string in this case. And I would say connection strings storage just like we did here in our app settings file so it will be kind of treated as if it were in in this ver file so connection string storage and here we'll put our connection string um, it's not a colon but actually a comma all right, so this is how you could do if you were okay, how you could do it if you were storing this, you know, string as an environment variable. All right, so we have the basic part out of the way now. So anyway, I'm gonna comment this part out because we won't really be using it. Let's just keep it here. Uh, what we're actually going to do is we can uh, create a new folder here. It's called models. So this will have to do with our database. So maybe first uh, let's create a file called dapper context that will help us um, 
basically talk to the database. So over here, I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, public class that for context. So private the only we're gonna uh, have our configuration here. So let's say configuration. And also our connection string. So let's create a constructor here where we can inject our uh, configuration. So let's dapper, say dapper context i configuration configuration. So we can basically can say configuration configuration and uh, connection string we're gonna get it for from that configuration actually we can use this part here to get it um, configuration connection string storage Okay, so they want to make this knowable. All right, so basically we're just gonna have like one method here, one public method. Actually, let's add some usings here. So using system data uh, and also using my SQL connector. Uh, okay, we haven't really finished editing the file, so. Uh, we're going to say public IDB connection and create connection. It's going to be a new my SQL connection. We're gonna use our connection string over here. Mm. Okay, it's complaining about the MySQL connector. Maybe restarting will help. Okay, it did. Uh, so let's go back here now. Everything seems to be working here, no errors. Okay, so once we have this dapper context, we're gonna go ahead and create one more file called item, which will correspond to the item table or to the layout of the item table um, in our database. So basically this so we have id name and quantity here so over here we're gonna uh, say
Let's maybe put it in the names in the namespace. Uh, my web API models. Mm. Could do it the same with this context here. Maybe, maybe here. So public record item. So we're going to have uh, this property here, let's say ID. So what we had there, another prop, um, let's say required, require string name. And then we're going to have one more property and quantity. <clears throat> okay, looks about right. So now let's go to the program CS file and add that dapper context. All right. Maybe somewhere here. Builder services at singleton upper. Uh, I'm gonna have to include that namespace. So using my web API models. So dapper context. Okay, so we have it here. Right. And now we're going to create a class that will be our repository because we will be trying to use the so called repository pattern. So we have those different layers and the control layer is separated from from the, the layer that actually deals with you know talking to the database so we kind of go in up or you know in the stack here so let's create a new folder let's call it repositories And in this folder, I'm going to create a new file, new class called item repository CS. Right, so we're going to write some code here. So public class item repository so we're going to be using um, my web API models Also going to be using Dapper and possibly system data. You say private read only Dapper context. I'm going to call it underscore context. And we can also um, 
bring our iLogger here in case we need to lock something. So we're gonna create a constructor where we inject those things. So dapper context. And the logger. You can say context context. Um, uh, underscore logger logger. All right, so we have that out of the way. So let's uh, work on the actual, you know, database or, or exchanging data with a database. So first of all, we're gonna create a method called get items. I think yeah, get items that will correspond to this stored procedure. Get items. So we can say uh, public async task enumerable item. I say get items async. So over right here we're going to say constant string. SQL, so this is our command. In this case, it's just the name of the stored uh, procedure, so it will be a get items. So sp get items. So now we're going to say using idb connection. Connection uh, context create connection, and now we're gonna uh, try to retrieve those items. So, type here is the same so I enumerable item, Let's say items uh, await connection and we're going to say query async and item is the type we're going to use our uh, command here which is in this case it's just the name of the stored procedure and we have to specify the command type to be stored procedure And then we're going to return those items. So this is our first method over here. And now we might, I, I may copy this to make it a little faster. So this is going to be get item async. So just one singular item or null if it doesn't exist. So let's change it to get item. And we're gonna say a uh, query single or default async. This is of course uh, gonna be just an item. And here we we can specify its ID, so int ID, so we can find it by ID. Okay, so looks about right, I think. Let's just maybe move it to the next line 
So we have get items, just like here, get items and now get item based on its ID. Um, and then we're going to have something like save item. So save item async. And I actually have this item here. So save item instead of get item. So instead of this, uh, we're going to return the number of affected rows. So it's going to be int to see if our operation was successful. I'm going to say rows affected. I'm going to say await uh, connection. Execute async. So SQL going to pass our item here and command type as before is stored procedure. So we're going to return the number of affected rows uh, which in this case because it's an absurd um, operation so there will be either one or two um, okay so finally we have a delete action here so let's maybe copy this over here even though this might work better, you're gonna be able to delete it by uh, by ID. So delete delete item. So just like here, we're gonna use the ID. and also return the number of rows affected. So I think that's it for the repository part. Um, and now we have, to, well, finally, I think it's one of the final steps here. We have to create a, a, an item controller so that we can actually have those endpoints exposed here and, and we can actually call the API. All right, so we're going to create one folder here. Let's call it controllers. Well, actually it exists already, so maybe let me just delete that. So yeah, something like this. So we're going to create a new file here. You're going to say item controller. Yes. So I'm using here Microsoft SPNet Core MVC. Uh, maybe also my web API models and my web API repositories. Uh, okay, we didn't specify a namespace here. Namespace. Web API. So let's copy it over here. Let's 
So public class item controller. It inherits from a controller base. And you're gonna say private read only. Uh, item repository, it's called repo. And maybe let's take this logger here as well. Just change it to item controller. Mm. Just use this as some sort of template. So this is our item controller. And let's go repo. Okay, so looks about right. We also have to decorate this and say API controller and the um, top route here will be, let's say API uh, items. All right, so So just like we had in this repository here, we're going to start with the get method. So we're going to say HTTP get and public async task. action result you're going to specify the same type as here which is i enumerable item so get items so items basically we're going to call our repository and get those items from there. Uh, await and you're going to say return OK items. If nothing is found, then just uh, this list will be empty. Uh, repositories oh, let me check maybe it needs to be restarted altogether yeah so we can see those items well let's see if it actually works so we have two items here from the previous tutorial, from the previous video. So let's say let's see if we can get it through this interface. Okay, so try it out. Execute. Um, service. So, yeah, 
it's complaining about uh, not being able to resolve service for item repository. Uh, so let's actually add it here and should solve the problem. So you can say builder services add scoped um, so using my web ABI repositories so you say item repository and hopefully it can work this time let's just restart it all together and then let's try it out all right so you can see that it does work it brings the data from our database so let's just you know complete this example by adding the remaining methods so let's go back to item controller the next would be the next one would be HTTP get except here we specify the ID of our item so we can say ID which is an integer so let's say public async task I action result um, actually action result just like previously except we're just dealing with one item so get item and here's our ID. So we're gonna say item await get item async. So this is our ID. And if item is null we're gonna return not found which corresponds to the 404 not found response and if it's not null so we're just gonna return it as okay with an okay status right so this is our item okay so let's see if we can make that work so here you can see that we had two items and their IDs were one and three respectively so let's say we want to retrieve that pencil which is ID number three so let's test it execute we got a pencil the first item let's try it as well and now we have the book great so so far it's working without any problems right so the next method would be for saving our items so it is going to say http post and which is normally used uh, used for like insert operations but in this case probably it's the better choice between HTT post and put uh, when it comes to an upsert operation basically like a save operation so if the specified item already exists it's going to be updated if it doesn't exist it's going to be added for the first time uh, so we're going to say uh, public async again task i action result because we don't actually be returning like you know some item here so just to 
generic interface. So save item. And we can be explicit and say it's from uh, the body of the, you know, uh, and we're going to say item, item. Uh, rows affected. I'm going to say await car repository save item async. And now, if the number of rows affected is uh, greater than zero, then we're going to just return successfully no content because well, there's nothing really to return. Everything's fine, but if this doesn't work, we're going to return a bad request. We're going to say failed to save the item. And finally, we're going to have a delete method here. So H delete so we're going to say and delete item and we're going to use its ID here um, so delete item async based on its ID so with the number of rows affected is zero then we're going to say bad request failed to delete the item. Otherwise, we return when it's successful, we return no content. All right, so it looks pretty good so far. Let's test what we have. All right, so we haven't tested the post method yet. So let's try. Okay, so we're going to say ID for name. What did we have there? A book pencil. So maybe pen. And let's say 200 of them. Execute. It's successful so let's say let's see if it's there already so try it out execute and we have our pen here but let's say we want to change the quantity now so we're going to say 250 we're going to execute it's successful as well and let's see if it's been updated yeah now we have 250 um, pens so that seems to work and maybe let's try to delete something, for example, this pencil here. Uh, okay, so we're going to say pencil, which um, yeah, whose number is 3. This ID is 3. I'm going to say execute. And it seems to be successful, so let's execute this one as well. And now we no longer have um, any pencils there. Okay, so this looks like we've done like we're done. So hopefully you you enjoy this tutorial and hopefully you'll find it useful. And if you do, please uh, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more content. Thank you and bye.